Hello and welcome to the Business Standard Morning Show. I'm Binu Sandhu. Let's take a look at the stories for the day. After its crackdown on some Chinese phone makers for alleged tax evasion and money laundering, the government is reportedly planning to reserve the entry level phone category, that is, phones costing below 10,000 rupees, for domestic players only. The plan is to revive the domestic mobile device industry, which is currently dominated by the Chinese firms. Now, what will be the impact of such a move? Let's find out. As recently as 2015, Indian brands like Micromax, Lava, Carbon and Intex adorned the shelves of phone shops across the country and sold like hotcakes. But then, Chinese phones started pushing Indian handsets off the shelves slowly but steadily. Cut to 2022, local firms have been decimated. Indian brands combined have a market share of less than 1% in overall smartphone shipments from all brands including America's Apple and South Korea's Samsung. Meanwhile, the top four Chinese brands have a 63% market share, whereas in the sub 10,000 rupee segment, the market share of Indian brands is around 3 to 4%, while that of Chinese brands is almost 90%. Now, while discussions on the strategy for reviving the domestic mobile device industry are on, there is a growing consensus within the government around the idea that the lower end of the market should be reserved only for domestic players. Chinese brands like Xiaomi, Realme, Oppo, Vivo and Transient might have to exit the segment of India's mobile market that is made up of handsets priced below 10,000 rupees. Such a move would be part of the plan to create Indian champions in the sector, which is a key objective of the production-linked incentive scheme. The strategy could be executed either through an enabling framework or negotiations. One option is to encourage foreign OEMs to push electronic manufacturing services in India and co-develop and co-design affordable phones with homegrown brands. But who will fill the void if Chinese firms are barred? Uh, if we remove China-based brands, then um, in among global brands, there's only one name that pops into my mind is Samsung. So Samsung, uh, that brand has presence in almost all the price bands. And on top of that, they have a very, uh, you know, uh, dedicated supply chain and manufacturing base in India. They have been exporting a lot of uh, devices, uh, smartphones uh, from India. And they have the capacity to, uh, you know, you know, to flood the market. Uh, will that be enough? Uh, it's difficult to say so. Among Indian brands, uh, I can see one uh, major player, which is Jio with the Geophone Next, that can, um, you know, Geophone Next has been ramping up its production since past few quarters. We have seen that and they uh, they will be in a prime position to, uh, you know, leverage this issue as well. Apart from these two brands, there are Lava, Micromax. So Lava has been looking to make a comeback. Like these, all, all other Indian brands are looking for a revival and making a comeback, uh, you know, since 2018 and 2017. This can be an opportunity for them as well. But if you talk about uh, why these brands have considerably been going down in this particular segment is the scale provided by the Chinese players. Uh, the supply may be a problem uh, in, a, in a short term because we are not sure that the capacity that, uh, that the other brands have will be able to satisfy the consumer demand uh, in the near term. Due to government policies, Chinese companies have localized their production making India the second biggest mobile manufacturer after China. In fact, nearly all the phones sold in India are manufactured domestically. In March, in a big boost to the PLI scheme, Apple's vendors committed to a minimum incremental production of 25,000 crore rupees of mobile devices in FY23. This threefold jump in commitment over FY22 has been made possible by the Indian entry of Apple's third contract manufacturer, Pegatron. Domestic firms Lava, Micromax, Padgett Electronics and UTL Neolinks also participated in the PLI scheme for making mobile devices. However, their Chinese counterparts, 
who are allegedly on a subsidy binge have outcompeted them. Analysts say that they have also been unable to become contract manufacturers for mobile phones. Thus, their production levels aren't enough to take the incentives on offer. Slowly and steadily, uh, the local value addition and the component ecosystem in India is al- already growing. And we can't deny the involvement and the contribution of these China-based brands that have done in, in the overall Make in India initiative. So most of the you know display providers or camera module providers which have set up shop in India, these have been brought by the likes of Samsung and these Chinese brands. Still at this point of time, if you see, we are quite dependent on the Shenzhen ecosystem or the Chinese greater China ecosystem for the procurement of component. I don't think this as an inflection point that now value addition will go uh, you know, exponentially high. This development comes at a time when the government is looking into cases of alleged tax evasion by OPPO, Vivo India and Xiaomi. Investigation agencies are also looking into alleged money laundering violations by Chinese mobile makers. Brands that will be affected if the ban is implemented are Realme, Xiaomi, Vivo, Techno, Itel and Infinix. Whenever it is launched, the Geophone 5G which will be reportedly priced between 9,000 rupees and 12,000 rupees, could benefit from such a ban. Meanwhile, other brands, including Indian ones, will have an opportunity to increase their capacity. However, that might not be possible in the short term, which might lead to a supply shortage. listed. वो तो सबसे आसान है तुझे फाइव पैसा नहीं पता शह अब तो सबको पता है फाइव पैसा पर है चार हजार स्टॉक्स की रिसर्च टेक्निकल टूल्स और इन्वेस्टमेंट आइडियाज डाउनलोड फाइव पैसा नाउ अब तो सबको पता है इन्वेस्टिंग मेड इजी एंड रिपोर्टिंग विद फाइव पैसा इन्वेस्टमेंट इन सिक्योरिटीज मार्केट आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल द रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली बिफोर इन्वेस्टिंग Manufacturing phones domestically will also boost the government's revenue in the long run. Meanwhile, GST continues to be a major source of revenue for the government, though it is still a work in progress. GST com- compensation remains a bone of contention between the centre and the states. As GST collections soar, will this hit the state's case, which have been calling for its extension? Watch our next report to find out. At this month's meeting of the Niti Aayog's governing council, chaired by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, chief ministers of some non-BJP ruled states reiterated their demand to extend the GST compensation cess regime for another 5 years. According to a working paper by the National Institute of Public Finance and Policy, Punjab, Goa, and Chhattisgarh may face the most revenue stress once the compensation regime ends. but the center remained non-committal there was no word on it even after the previous gst council meeting in june which had coincided with the completion of 5 years of the gst regime as many as 16 states spoke on the compensation with some pitching for extension of at least a few years if not for 5 years the gst compensation mechanism was designed to make up for the loss of states as revenue on account of the regime's implementation 5 years ago The 5-year compensation period ended in June this year. The goods and services tax collections have remained upbeat for the past few months, staying above rupees 1.4 trillion for 5 straight months ending July. In fact, July's collection was the second highest since the rollout of the indirect tax regime. The strong GST collections could weaken the state's demand to extend the compensation beyond June 2022. Former Finance Secretary Hasmukh Adiya in a recent interview with the Business Daily said that if the compensation is continued for too long it will act as a disincentive in increasing collections and lead to laxity of state bureaucracy the center also said it had already cleared arrears worth rupees 85000 crore and will front load the remaining so that states don't face any cash flow problem even if the compensation were to be extended there is the question of how it would be funded So the GST compensation says will be levied till 2026 it will only be used to repay the GST compensation says shortfall that arose in the last 2 years due to the pandemic the center had borrowed rupees 1.1 trillion in 2020-21 
and rupees 1.59 trillion in 2021-22 in loans from the market to provide compensation to states. The GST collection, especially in the last five months or so, has been very, very robust. And when GST collections are robust, they are robust not only for the central government, they are also robust for the state government. Now, there could be a need for states requiring more finances to fund their development schemes. All states have also had significant healthcare costs on account of the two years of you know pandemic. So there may be a genuine need for states to have more funds at their disposal to fund various development schemes and healthcare schemes and others. But the need for more funds may not necessitate an extension of the compensation test period. Because as I said earlier, look, one, the collections are upbeat. Second, for businesses, the compensation test period is already extended till 2026. So if now the compensation test period for the states is extended by, let's say, two years, that means for businesses, it gets extended till 2028 or 29, which possibly businesses have not bargained. Even all businesses which were subjected to compensation says, all products which were subjected to compensation says, did their planning and pricing on the basis that this is a tax for five years and it will come to an end in June 2022. Now, it has been extended for four years you know, from that date. So I would ideally say that from a business perspective, it should not be extended further at all. On the other hand, some states argue that their finances have not recovered yet from the pandemic. States' revenue receipts declined by 0.6% in FY21 and a similar decline was seen in FY20. A recent RBI report highlighted that states' fiscal positions deteriorated sharply in 2020 and there are warning signs of building stress. States relied on compensation to achieve 23% of the guaranteed revenue in 2019-20 and 36% in 2020-21. Then there's also the question of whether the GST regime has helped in incremental revenue for states. According to an India ratings report, the states' GST on an average grew by 6.7% during FY18 to FY21, lower than the 9.8% growth recorded by the taxes subsumed under GST during FY14 to FY17. During FY19 to FY22, Odisha was the only state having average SGST collection exceeding 14%, with a total of 17 major states recording average SGST growth of below 10%. The report said the compensation was promised based on the assumption that the state's GST growth rate will be 14% in the base year of 2015-16. So does this warrant for a compensation extension? Here's what N. R. Bhanu Murthy, Vice Chancellor of the B. R. Ambedkar School of Economics University, has to say. Uh, you know what we see in the recent trends, uh, like uh, increase in GST collections, maybe a, a kind of um, uh, aberration in a way, uh, where uh, this increase is largely due to an increase in the buoyancy of uh, GST tax. So that may be showing up in the overall collection, but um, it still. Um, puts a dent on the state fiscal positions, um, you know, compared to what is promised uh, that 14%, um, you know, growth in overall GST. So there is, uh, in fact, there are somebody estimated that there's almost some 30% dent on the overall revenues for the states. So I think given that kind of situation, there is a need for the central government to hand on uh, the states, uh, at least for a few, for a few more months or a few more quarters. Uh, but I am not certainly saying that uh, it should continue for five years. Clearly, experts say there is no case for extension of compensation for another five-year period. But states need some support, at least for a few more months. In return, state tax officers also need to be vigilant to check evasions and further improve GST realizations to move away from compensation support once and for all. मत पूछ यार फिर से स्टॉक्स में फंस गया तो स्टॉक्स के साथ बॉन्ड्स इंश्योरेंस गोल्ड में बैलेंस कर इसमें बहुत तामचाम है तुझे फाइव पैसा नहीं पता अब तो सबको पता है फाइव पैसा है ऑल इन वन अकाउंट डाउनलोड फाइव पैसा नाउ अब तो सबको पता है Investing made easy and rewarding with five paisa. Investments in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing.
Let us now turn our attention to global central banks which are jacking up interest rates to bring down inflation. So should you buy on dips or sell on a rally? And which sectors are likely to do well? Here's Yuar Bhatt, co-founder and director of Alphaniti Fintech in a conversation with Business Standards Puneet Vadva on his interpretation of the latest developments and the sectors he thinks that may do well going forward. Let's listen in. Hello and welcome to the show. I am Puneet Vadva and we have with us today Mr. Yuval Bhatt, co-founder and director at Alpha Niti Fintech. Welcome to the show, Mr. Bhatt. For the next two years, do you think that the market is the bulk of the pain behind us now or will they continue to muddle along? Because the past few sessions, we have seen a good rally in the global equity markets, including in India. Well, I think uh, because uh, after a long time, after some negotiations, we saw uh, some grain coming out of uh, the war zone. So I think that is something that the market cheered. Uh, but at the same time, you had this uh, visit uh, by the U.S. speaker to Taiwan and, you know, there are some uh, repercussions of that. So we do not know how far it will go. Uh, there are some missiles that have fallen within uh, the, the Japanese uh, economic zone and stuff like that. Um, so therefore, I think if this is all contained and if, uh, if the, the new war doesn't develop and if the old war sort of uh, tapers down, then I think we are in for reasonably, uh, I mean, we are uh, getting into normalcy reasonably quickly. But if that is not the case, I think uh, a deep recession is on the cards. And then I think things will be quite bad. And co coupled with the acute quantitative tightening that we're going to see more aggressively as we go along. On its part, the Reserve Bank also has outlined its strategy to combat inflation. Uh, are the measures outlined in the policy announced recently uh, what the markets expected? One. Two, do you think that the money will now you know, move out from equity markets to safer zones like a fixed deposit, wherein the uh, they they assured the return and probably now going to uh, it will not now be higher. Well, I think the Reserve Bank has handled the situation quite competently. Uh, whether it is through um, accommodation in the past, quantitative accommodation through liquidity accommodation in the past, and of course uh, re recent uh, couple of hikes that we have seen over the last few months. But uh, I think even uh, the, the latest uh, uh, policy has increased interest rates. But uh, in fact, they are talking about uh, inflation probably petering off from uh, from the sort of near peak levels that we are seeing now. So that being the case, um, we can probably see that uh, India. Um, if you see most of the statistics as far as India is concerned, whether it is GST collection, whether it is uh, petroleum consumption, things are looking reasonably all right. The only problem that we have seen of late is that hundred billion dollar uh, trade uh, deficit that we saw in the first quarter of uh, FI23 which is a cause for concern. But I think uh, if that is brought under some control, because the rupee has also uh, has adjusted to this new reality quite well, and if that is handled well, then I think India would be seen as uh, an island of growth where we have serious problems as far as growth is concerned elsewhere in the world. So therefore, I think Indi the Indian market will continue to do reasonably all right, um, despite the fact that elsewhere in the world, uh, we have serious problems. But don't you think that the uh, possible uh, hikes in rate by the RBI could tend demand. Well, it would, but despite all that, we still have uh, seen robust growth because there, there is, uh, we are coming from a low base. That, that is something that we have to appreciate. So from with that uh, low base, I think things are looking all right uh, because economic activity, is, GST collection is the best indicator of economic activity. And that seems to be gathering steam. And if that gathers steam, I think um, the fiscal uh, position would probably be slightly better than what it, what it was envisaged earlier. And uh, while interest rates would have some influence on demand, but uh, that is not um, probably going to be very serious because quite a lot of uh, the inflation that was there was on account of uh, supply constraints. And those supply constraints are being addressed. If you see the, the shipping, um, um, sort of, uh, shipping costs, they have come down dramatically over the last uh, few weeks. And so if these things uh, sort of uh, uh, ease out, uh, then I think uh, raw material costs and input costs will come down and that would probably inch, and even commodity prices have come off quite a lot. So all these things will ensure that uh, inflation is probably under reasonable control and uh, even the uh, hikes in interest rate might not be as um, steep as we initially thought. So how should investors build an equity corpus now? Are, still, are the large caps still a safer option or a the exposure to mid caps and small caps is uh, advisable at the current juncture. There is a huge uncertainty looming uh, in the global scene uh, with uh, between the um, you know, Western world and uh, uh, the communist world as it were. So I think that is something that we have to watch very closely. Given this sort of uh, uh, heightened uncertainties, 
I think it's much better to be in um, well-managed large caps uh, than in the mid and small caps because the mid and small caps require a lot more of um, uh, research and a lot more of understanding of the business uh, than uh, the, uh, the the blue chips as it were. So therefore, given the level of uncertainty, I would uh, advise uh, retail investors to concentrate on the big large caps, which probably can weather any potential storm much better than the mid and, large, uh, mid and small cap storm. Any particular sectors that you find uh, investment worthy at the current juncture? Well, I think the one that uh, one sector that has improved dramatically over the last uh, few quarters has been uh, banking and financial services. They've done extremely well. Even even the June quarter results have been extremely good. So it is uh, basically banking and financial services. Uh, they are enablers of growth uh, in in a manner of speaking in the economy, and they have uh, they are in reasonably good shape now. I think that is one sector that one one needs to be invested in. Plus, of course, um, uh, capital goods, uh, infrastructure, these are uh, good sectors to be invested in because there's a lot more of investment that is going to come um, in modernizing the economy. So on that note, we'd like to thank you, Mr. Bhatt, for joining us today. We hope to see you soon. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Shares me trading. तुम्हें फाइल पैसा नहीं पता ओए, अब तो सबको पता है फाइव पैसा पर मिलते हैं रिसर्च टूल्स पोर्टफोलियो एनालिटिक्स और इन्वेस्टमेंट आइडियाज भी डाउनलोड फाइव पैसा ना अब तो सबको पता है इन्वेस्टिंग मेड इजी एंड रिपोर्टिंग विद फाइव पैसा इन्वेस्टमेंट इन सिक्योरिटीज मार्केट आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल द रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट केयरफुल बिफोर इन्वेस्टिंग You are bhat believe that the Indian economy is on a strong footing and can withstand the headwinds. One of the parameters to assess the health of any economy is its road network. Roads are said to be the arteries of an economy. India has the second largest road network in the world after the US, but there's a flip side to it too. A country also sees the maximum number of road accident deaths in the world. And to prevent that, the government will implement Bharat End Cap from April 1 next year. Here's more on it. Indian roads are the most lethal. According to an estimate, at least 14 people get killed every hour on the roads here. The government recently told the parliament that the country accounts for the maximum number of road accident deaths. The government's plan to introduce Bharat New Car Assessment Program or NCAP is being seen as a step towards minimizing these casualties. In line with the global standards, Union Road Transport Minister Nitin Gadkari recently approved a draft notification of Bharat NCAP New Car Assessment Program. The Bharat NCAP is a rating-based safety assessment of Indian cars based on various parameters. It will be aligned with global benchmark testing protocols. Once the Bharat NCAP program is adopted, cars will be assigned a safety star rating from 1 to 5 and consumers will be able to make informed choices. Getting star ratings to their cars is a global standard followed by many leading automakers. While different regions and countries have their own NCAP programs, a global NCAP was formed in 2011 to enhance cooperation between various NCAPs and promote vehicle crash testing in emerging markets. How is the star rating assigned? The star rating will be assigned to cars based on the scores achieved in various parameters. The global NCAP conducts front and side impact crash tests and the cars will be evaluated on various assessment tests such as child and adult occupant protection. For instance, in November 2021, the Mahindra XUV 700 received a 5-star rating from global NCAP for adult occupant protection and 4 stars for child occupant protection. For Bharat NCAP star rating 2, the vehicles will be evaluated on adult occupant protection, child occupant protection and safety assist technologies. Union Minister Gatkari said the star rating of cars based on crash tests will not only ensure structural and passenger safety in cars, but also raise the protection of exports. It will also act as an incentive for car makers as they move to advanced safety technologies to earn higher ratings. I will
I'm backed by the nation's trusted bank, SBI, the banker to every Indian. Meanwhile, senior executives of Maruti Suzuki have expressed concerns that the new safety regulations may lead to a rise in car prices and will deter first-time buyers. That's all for today. For more news and analysis, please log into our website www.business-standard.com and we'll also be back tomorrow morning with more. Stay tuned and thank you for watching. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.